All right, everyone, welcome back for another wonderful day. Here's Taco Stacks. That's me. We are at the Bethlehem Boutique at the Rink annual sale that they have. Um, I guess this must be like kind of like a water park or a pool that they must have in the area. Very nice. They even have a slide that goes with it. If I was a kid around here, I would absolutely love this place in the summer. Today would be a great day to use it. It's 97 degrees right now. I bet it's probably a little over 105 on top of this black top that's not really well looks like it needs some work uh, but we are at the sale i've never been here i'm here on premiere night so on today's night uh it starts at four o'clock runs until i think like nine or ten o'clock tonight you pay ten dollars to get into the door uh you get first dibs on everything uh, but you do pay ten bucks it's a premium to just get through the door i think tomorrow or the next day is like the full sale day then there's half off day then there's a bag day uh, but apparently it's a really yard, a really large yard sale. So hopefully today is going to be awesome. I can show you guys what we find and take you along with another wonderful adventure. So let's get into it. So the line actually, look at the parking lot, line goes all the way back here. All the way to that pine tree. <laughs> this is a disaster. No idea where to go. Coats and jackets, prices marked. Polo shirts. I guess this. I don't know where to go. I'll have to put you guys down for a second. I see that. Comes with it. Oh sure. Excuse me. So much random stuff. Fifteen dollars for that. That's fifteen bucks.
aquí. Ay, ay, ay. Kind of different. I've never seen that with a big block font like that. It's kind of squarey as well. I'm gonna get that for three dollars. Oh jeez, that's gonna break in another second. A lot of people, a lot of stuff. Don't know where to go as always. You just play the guessing game. Hope you pick the best place. There's a lot of brass for over there. Kind of an interesting blob top here, and there's of course no price on it. Why'd they do that? I'm gonna have to ask someone, I don't have a clue. Twenty bucks for a main in Taiwan. I don't think that's a good deal, but if you need a cast iron, maybe. It's outrageously hot in here, also. I'm not seeing a whole lot. I'll be honest with you. These uh, ceramic Christmas trees are like eighty-five bucks a piece. Kinda nuts. Someone did, oh no, I was gonna say, someone picked up the $20 cast iron piece, but nope, it's over there. Still hanging out in the corner. Seven. Oh, a blue one. I don't think I've seen that one before. Walmart.com. All right. What about this black one back here? They got all sorts of stuff in there. 1997. Of course, they don't. Half the stuff is marked, half the stuff isn't marked. Should be a dollar, but I ain't gonna ask about it. You know, I gotta find someone who can mark something. Oh, that lady probably can. I want the black one. I think it's kind of cool. I don't, I don't want this stuff. 
different. But I gotta find some on the market because I'm not. I'm not sure what they charge you. Reproduction. These bags are seven dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars. What else we got here? That's marked okay. It's twenty dollars. <laughs> trick might be to look at the stuff underneath the table. It's weird just like to go to like a yard sale, rummage sale, and see stuff like those rolling pits are marked eight to twelve dollars. I'm used to pick them up for like 50 cents or a quarter or a dollar. 12 pieces, ten dollars. These are just like the prices kind of going around. I mean obviously you got stuff like this. I don't know if it's talking to me or not. Interesting. chocolate that's kind of cool it's a plaster of some sort Sticks. <laughs> They're a yardstick, but they fold out it's for some. I think that's a local uh, beer store around here. I'm kind of shocked there's no yardsticks. I'm not going to cry about it, but. So like I said, I'll be using a broken camera today. And actually, the funny thing about this camera is the old one, I can only do two clips in between each uh, in between each time I had to take the battery out. It was just a, an error with the camera. This one seems to work continuously, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up here for this event. Bethlehem Boutique at the Rink. And people are still coming in. $10 to get in. But, you know, if you're getting off work or whatever. All right, so I made it back. This was the first time I've ever been to this sale. Uh, it goes to a great cause. As far as I know, I believe it goes to cancer research as well. Uh, a little background on it. I went on the premiere day, which was the uh, entry was $10. It seemed a little bit confusing at first. Uh, there is these so-called bands that you get. Uh, it seems like from the grapevine from when I talk to people, it's like it seems like every year it changes and how that works. Um, so this year, for some reason, I think if you donate anything, there was also advertisement on the radio, 
There was another option of if you stop by this week while they were setting up. And then lastly, there was one other thing. Oh, yeah. Someone said if you volunteer, uh, which I don't know if that was really correct. So anyway, you had four or five different options to get these kind of bands pre-sale. Somehow only eight to ten people got these bands. So I don't know how it really happened. Uh, but people have been waiting for this sale really early in the morning and uh, there was a lot of fighting and anger in the uh, beginning of the sale because it seemed like the volunteers kind of prioritized that these people who already pre-bought the bands would get first dibs in going into the event. So I felt very bad because the volunteers got a huge backlash from a lot of the people who were going to this sale. Uh, some people have been there since 8 this morning. Uh, I know some people who've been there since 9 and 10 o'clock this morning. And this sale started at 4 o'clock. And these people who got these pre-sale bands that only 8 to 10 people somehow knew about. Somehow we're going to get priority over the people who've been there since 8 this morning. Which is, uh, what is that? That is about 8 hours in advance. Uh, so I felt very bad for the volunteers. But uh, it, it was just a really hot day. And that's just kind of what ha happens at rummage sales. A lot of people get very fired up and very fierce about line skipping and whatnot. Uh, so I really don't know the whole background on it, but I thought it was weird and fishy that only like 8 to 10 people knew about it. And there had to be close to 500 or 600 people who went to this sale today in line. Uh, but I did find some cool things. Now, keep in mind, this is a boutique style sale. Uh, so everything was kind of expensive in terms of, you know, rummage sale prices. It seemed like it was a, a little bit more pricier than the V&A rummage sale, even on the Friends and Family Day where you pay 25% more. I did manage to find some things, so we got a nice Notre Dame sweatshirt here. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting, and I have a lot of things up here because right now, right now my Jeep is in the shop. Can't wait around here. Um, so I have like all my junk from the Jeep just like thrown in the front here. I did think it was really interesting. Oh, jeez. I probably should just throw this on the ground so you can lay it flat. Um, but this is a nice Cardinals jersey. I believe it's early 2000s or so. Majestic brand. But look at this. Nice Mark McGuire. I do remember these, I believe, are called the replica style jerseys. Back when replicas were actually replicas. Um, way before they made knockoff from a land of far away jerseys. Um, these were like the jerseys you can buy from the store from the baseball stadium. And if you didn't want to go out and spend 200 or $300 a jersey, these things were like 60 to $80. So you got it, it was embroidered, it was stitched on. Um, it doesn't have the MLB logo patch. It doesn't have the shadow block font. It is very standard, one color on the back, but everything is stitched on. And the quality of these 2000s and late 90s jerseys are just amazing, I gotta say. Um, but very, very interesting. When I was checking out, the lady was like, oh, wow, you found a Cardinals jersey. It's kind of interesting because we don't accept and we don't sell sport teams that aren't local. And I thought about it, and I was like, that's right. When I was looking through the racks, everything was Phillies, Eagles, there was some Steelers stuff. And some New York Giants stuff. I didn't see any New York Mets teams or New York Mets apparel. I didn't see any Yankees apparel. I didn't see any other. I didn't see Braves. I didn't see any team from the West Coast. The Cardinals jersey somehow found its way there. But then I thought, what do you mean you don't sell other sport teams? There was no college apparel from any colleges outside of Pennsylvania. So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what, like, I don't even... It's mind-boggling to me, but I guess if you're a boutique, kind of like a higher-end resale shop or whatever it might be, um, you're probably going to have like the cream of the crop. Everything there was in immaculate condition. No chips on, you know, items. All I think I got a couple bottles. They weren't cracked. They weren't broken. A little dirty, whatnot. Uh, but none of the clothes were uh, stained or dirty. Everything was like in immaculate condition. So, the uh, the word boutique really lived up to its name. I did pick up this. I figured it would be kind of cool, something a little bit different, because um, I did pick up pretty much things that I buy all the time. Uh, this is 1997, kind of cool, it's in a black font. I'll keep this for Halloween. I did find one hatchet for a buck. There was another one there I probably should have bought when I went back. It was gone, so someone else can enjoy it. I did also find, where the heck is that? Oh, that's my favorite bottle. This one is also going to my personal collection. Something a little bit different. It is a smaller, pint size Mason's. But i never seen a, a mason jar that is not a ball or anything that takes up the entire front of the entire jar from top to bottom. Look at that. 
I don't think I've ever seen one, and I definitely don't own one, so I figured for a pint size, I think that's kind of cool for $3. I'll grab that, add to my collection. Then lastly, this was $6. I decided to buy it. It is a blob top. It's one of these shorter bottles called a squat bottle. Um, there you can kind of see the size comparison. It's not like your typical soda bottle, which is probably another, I'd say, four or five inches taller. These are one of the short ones. This one's out of Redding, Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't even see, no, it doesn't have a logo for PA or Pennsylvania. It just says Redding, which is, I don't know, it's about, what, 60 miles, 50 miles west of here? For Schick and Fett. Schick and Fett. I don't know, uh, but very, very cool bottle here. Like I said, nothing's really chipped. This has been buried. That's why it's that color, but the... Uh, the ridge on the top is still good. If it was chipped or chunked out, I probably would have not bought it. Uh, it is also a flat bottom. It's not a pommel bottom. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up. That's going to wrap it up here for today's video. It was definitely a lot of fun to get out there and try a new uh, rummage sale, so to speak, at Boutique at the Rink. And, uh, yeah, it's going to wrap it up here. Hopefully you guys enjoy the treasure hunt. If you guys enjoyed it, smack the like button. Subscribe down below for more treasure hunts. Until next time, have a great day. Keep living the dream. Peace.